Okay, let's try this again. How is this now? Let's see if it's any better. Okay, still a little bit of lag, like maybe two seconds, but way better than before. All right, guys, sorry about that. I'm um, still figuring all this out. How's everyone doing out there? We got 14 people in here right now. Um, hopefully we get some more people back. So we're gonna wait till we get to about 20 something and then we'll get started. funny because a week ago you guys were all like we hope we don't get stuck we hope we don't have to stay at school i hope it's uh you know we get to go on break but now you guys are all hating it <laughs> is there really that much homework yeah okay some of you guys said that not everybody Well, here's how you can think about it. Remember, before all this happened, you were going to school from like 8 a.m. to 3.15, and then you had like three hours of homework after that. So that's what I'm saying. If you just wake up early and get your stuff done, you can be, you know, done with your school day by three, and then you can sit around being bored. <laughs> Nice, Derek. Way to keep up with all your work. You didn't miss anything, Curtis. They're just talking about how... Well, Corey's saying how much he's got a lot of homework, but... I don't know. Okay, we're at 18 people. Do a little bit more. Honestly, I can't even keep track. Is everybody in here fifth period? Looks like it. Yeah, you guys are fifth period. Princess, you're here. And Regina. Executive lockdown. You mean like martial law? It's kind of scary. I mean, um, you know, if you look at our numbers versus Italy, like Italy's actually, Italy officially has more cases than China or more deaths. It's more deaths than, deaths than China. Um, they do have a lot more old people, but yeah. And the problem is we, you know, some countries have done pretty good with uh, slowing it down, like Taiwan and South Korea. Um, but uh we kind of dropped the ball and we joined it really late. So unfortunately our, our curve is starting to look more like Italy's and less like South Korea or, uh, or Taiwan or Hong Kong. So Yeah, Matthew. In Italy, um, the the yeah, they're so, the hospitals are so overwhelmed that um, they're kind of having to choose who you know 
know, who to take care of. Uh, in medicine, that's called triaging, and all they can do is kind of like figure out who's got the best chance of surviving and, and giving the care to them. Um, so in Italy, if you're if you're going in and you're like already really sick, they may just say like, "Sorry, there's nothing we can do for you. You got to go home and uh, just die at home." It's pretty sad. Yeah, I don't know, it's everywhere. You can't run forever. Okay, well, let's, um, we're, at, we're about 20 people, so um, let's get started. Um, first question for you guys, just go ahead and type this in uh, as your response. Um, what are you doing? I know some of you guys already answered it, but what are you guys doing to stay busy? And in the same, don't type enter because it will help too many things pop up, but in one sentence, what are you doing to stay busy? And uh, are you or are you not keeping to a schedule? Let's see what you guys have to say. Sleep and no, homework and yes, starting homework at noon, Xbox, League of Legends, Netflix, Curtis, way to wake up on time. I'm, I've been waking about 8.30 to 9 also and uh, just getting getting a lot of work done. Uh, homework, more gaming. Naya, FaceTiming is really good. Yeah, it's, it's good to keep connected with your people. Um, no, I can barely keep up with the schedule. Yeah, you know, it's scheduling is a hard thing. Like, unless you're actually writing it out, it's pretty hard to have that schedule. So, you know, if you haven't tried it yet, um, definitely, like, literally. So the way, let's see, I'm looking at the one on our fridge right now. So on Monday, my wife and I didn't have a schedule, and we just kind of said, like, let's just figure it out. And you know, the whole day went by, and we kind of like did whatever we felt like. Uh, we went for like a little hike, and you know, cooked, and we got some work done. And um, I don't know, by the end of the day, we were kind of all over the place and feeling lost. So Tuesday, we made, we actually got a piece of paper out and we wrote a list of like all the things that I had to do, all the things she had to do. And then we like scheduled it out and followed it. And that really, uh, it made it nice just to be like, you know, we don't have a bell schedule right now, right? So it's kind of nice to know like, okay, by this time I need to finish this and move on to the next thing. And it can really help you have some structure there. Um, I, you guys been saying all kinds of stuff. Let's see. Homework, homework. Disney Plus, sleeping. Face timing. Good. So Kenny, when you say like the teachers don't give consistent work, do you mean like like some days, oh, so you typed a little more here. Some teachers give homework four days, some do five days. So it's harder to do a school schedule. Okay. Serena, yeah, that's good. That's good. Sounds like you're staying healthy there. Yeah, you know, teachers are, um, you know, we're, we're, we're all um, kind of figuring this out as we go. And honestly, Every uh, couple days we get like an email from the school or from the district saying like, hey, here's our expectations, here's how it's changed. So we're really figuring it out and um, don't feel bad, but like email your teachers, you know, email Ms. Dove and, and kind of like say, hey, here's some feedback. This would be, this is what would be helpful for us. You know, if you like gave us a little bit every day or, um, you know, just, I don't know, have more of a, a big picture schedule but just communicate with your teachers we're still figuring it out at the same time a lot of people have families and um, you know they're in the same boat as everybody else so it's, it's a lot to balance um, Corey I hope uh, when you play basketball you're not like going anywhere with a lot of people nearby because uh, you are supposed to be staying six feet apart so basketball unless you're just like taking shots on your own on an empty court it's not really social distancing. Oh, 
Okay, that's good, Corey. Okay, well, it looks like we have a lot of, I mean, quite a few people in here. Um, not everyone's commenting, and that's that's totally fine. I mean, if you guys are just watching, you know, feel free to chime in, but you don't have to. Um, we've already got, we've already been doing this for a little bit. I have a, you know, six periods come in at, uh, at 1.30, so um, I, I don't want to go all the way till then. But just a few things that um, I want, you know, we, we kind of checked in a little bit. Just want to remind you guys of um, kind of what I talked about in the intro video. Um, there's a really good like quote floating around right now, which is, um, you're not trying to, oh, I'm gonna mess this up. Basically, you wanna act like you're, you already have it. Does that make sense? So you wanna, if you act like you already have it, then you're gonna be more careful about like who you're coming in contact with and uh, how often you're leaving the house and, and how often you're washing your hands and how often the people around you. It's like if everybody acts like they have it and we're super careful, that's how we can flatten this curve, right? So, um, you know, it's really tempting, especially you're in, in the house all day, like you really want, you're like, I need to get out or I just need to, you know, um, do whatever. And, and by all means, like you're, the, the rules are, you are allowed to go out for like exercise. You can run, you can hike, you can bike. Um, but uh, yeah, Curtis, you haven't been outside at all. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's all about, it's all about timing, you know, like, I mean, we've seen people walking in the neighborhood and it's been kind of cool. They, they'll, they'll meet up with their neighbors to walk, but then they'll like walk on opposite sides of the street or something, you know, and they'll just like kind of yell across the street. Um, so you, you should, it's probably good to get out a little bit, but, um, just kind of be aware spatially of the people around you. Um, uh, and just, just, uh, yeah, cause you gotta get a little fresh air and some sunshine. That's good. Okay. Um, so couple things that I wanted to do today so we did our check-in already and I give you some tips on on the, like what to do if you're feeling like you're cooped up and you're um, you want to be a little active like this morning some of my AP students were asking like what could they do at home to stay active and um, I don't know if you guys have ever been to this part of YouTube but there's like a lot of stuff online there's a lot of content where there's physical trainer trainers and yoga instructors or whatever that uh, we'll put on these like little workout videos anywhere from five minutes to 20 minutes long um, and you can literally like put it on your TV or laptop and like do the workout um, yeah Miss Tiziani is probably doing some of those too so you know just because you're at home doesn't mean that you have to like be sitting on the couch or in bed all day so um, you know do what Miss Tiz or uh, the PE teachers are assigning you but there's also some really good stuff like on YouTube um, that will like really get your heart rate going and uh, you know you can get some decent workouts or if you just want to be like really chill if like yoga is more your thing and you just want to meditate and do some stretching and do more slow stuff uh, you can uh, find some like good yoga sessions um, on, on YouTube okay um, let's move into the next thing which is uh, our class stuff so yes no not yesterday two days ago I um, put up a lecture on speciation and hopefully you guys have all watched that by now. If you haven't, you're kind of falling behind. You should kind of keep up with everything because I am going to give you a little bit of stuff to do every day. Um, and so you guys watched the video. Hopefully that was clear. Um, did anybody have any questions about speciation in general? Or is anything uh, in the lecture that you didn't understand or have any questions on? Uh, we'll kind of spend a few minutes just taking questions for that. So if you have a question right now, go ahead and type it in on the comment section and uh, I will address that. Um, and if we could try to keep the comments on uh, on topic, that'll help everyone focus a little bit because uh, some of you guys are really into the chat room thing, which is fine. Maybe just do it later. Okay, we got a first question. Prezygotic barriers, that's an obstacle that prevents fertilization and postzygotic is an obstacle after zygote. Um, yeah, so that's, that's kind of what it is. Um, so all the barriers, if you like, I don't know if you, you guys should have taken notes, but if you look in your notebook, um, we listed all these barriers, right? Starting with geographic isolation uh, and then working all the way down to the end, which we had a, we had a hybrid breakdown. So there's a certain point in there where we differentiate between prezygotic and postzygotic. Uh, and that has to do with when sperm and egg come together to make that zygote. So um, look at your notes, someone type it in. First person to type it in wins a prize. Really, just type it in. What uh, what's the last barrier before the zygote forms? Someone type it in.
So quiet now. <laughs> I'm just imagining everyone grabbing their notebook. Uh, hybrid breakdowns at the very, very end. Don't have a notebook? What? Okay, yeah. Good job. It is, uh, let's see. I see a bunch of answers. So I can see I, we're getting two answers here. So some of you guys are saying it's mechanical isolation. Some of you guys are saying it's comedic isolation. Um, so uh, the answer, the last one, before you get the prezygotic is actually comedic. Okay. Now, the reason why it's comedic and not mechanical is because comedic isolation means that the sperm and egg have found each other, but they're not compatible. And that means that the sperm can't fertilize the egg and that zygote does, is not, it never actually forms, okay? So um, something goes wrong and it's not able to like form a living, growing zygote. So for that reason, comedic isolation is the last step. Um, and then before that is the mechanical isolation, which is the one where the parts don't fit, okay? Um, mechanical on your lecture, but comedic on the lecture with the diagram. Let me pull that up. Let me see, do I have the PowerPoint set up? I don't want to look around right now, but it wasn't I'm pretty sure I mentioned comedic isolation. Okay, give me one second here. I'm, I'm going to pull it up and we can all look at it together. Um, Could be right. I mean, I, you know, it's been a crazy week. Um, a lot going on. I'll share with you a little later. So it's definitely possible. Oh, you guys are right. Yeah. So I guess I did. I did skip over comedic isolation. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Let me um, let me hit present here, and we'll, I'm gonna switch over. switch over to the PowerPoint here. So here is, uh, let me move my face down here. So this is like the big picture and and, um, and you guys can see like comedic isolation is right there even though I didn't do a slide on it. Okay, so those of you guys that said mechanical, you guys are actually right because according to my lecture, I didn't cover that. Um, but there is a, another level of a comedic isolation. If you want to add that in, I think I did discuss it a little bit with the mule, but um, Basically what that means is, that, as I explained, like the sperm and egg are not compatible with each other, so that fertilization is not able to, uh, to happen. Um, those of you guys that copied the graph, that's awesome. It's a great diagram to, to have, um, but yeah, chromosomes don't match up, or um, the, you know, the proteins on the outside of the sperm don't match the proteins on the outside of the egg, so when the sperm and egg come together, they, the, the egg doesn't even let the sperm come in. Okay, so that, that would be uh, comedic isolation. Um, and if that doesn't happen, then you don't get to fertilization, which means all the other stuff here uh, doesn't happen. Okay. Um, so I hope that answers your question. Sorry about that mix-up there. Thank you guys for pointing that out. Um, now I did see another question. I'm going to scroll up here. I think Anjali, you had a question about example two of the uh, one species or two uh, activity. So let me pull that up. Have that over. Okay, so um, hopefully you guys kind of enjoyed this. Uh, the, the thing that like people get frustrated about with this is just, which is really kind of funny to me and entertaining to me is that there, for some of these, there's really no right or wrong answer, okay? 
Um, the, the reason I wanted to give you this was to kind of get you thinking and, and sometimes it's not that black and white. You kind of have to pick and choose like which criteria you want to use to determine if they're uh, the same species or not. Um, so let me read example two and uh, and then we'll kind of discuss this one because this was this, uh, Anjali's question. So uh, it says the eastern narrow mouth frogs range extends along the east coast from the Carolinas to Florida and west into parts of Oklahoma and Texas where it lives in moist areas. The Great Plains narrow mouth frog, or, uh, frog range is from Baja California to Mexico to the west to eastern Texas, eastern Oklahoma, and northern Missouri where it lives in drier regions. These frogs occasionally breed naturally in the overlap zones in parts of Texas and Oklahoma, but the fertility of their offspring is not known. Most of the time, these two groups of frogs select mates of their own type, perhaps because of differences in their mating calls. These two groups can be distinguished by their different colors. So there's a lot going on in there, right? Um, and um, the way you kind of want to think about this is like if we go back to the PowerPoint, um, the way you can think about this is like when you read the story, which one of these, um, these barriers like potentially could come in the way and, uh, and, and prevent them from being the same species? And the answer is it's a bunch of them, right? Uh, one is if they're, um, they are living really in two different areas, there's like only a tiny little overlap. What that means is like most of those frogs are actually isolated by geographic isolation. So that's like one argument you could use to say, yeah, there is a little overlap, but for the most part, they're not going to be mixing regu regularly, um, and and therefore they're a different species. Uh, another angle you could come from it, though, come at it from, is how um, they're yeah. As, as Kenny's pointing out, fertility is unknown. So um, you know, until we know for sure that their offspring are viable and fertile, we would not really say that they're the same species. So you could also come at come of it just from the angle of the definition of species, meaning that they have uh, viable and, and fertile offspring. Um, but there's also another one that I see in there, and that is that uh, in the second to last sentence, it says, most of the time, these two groups of frogs select mates of their own type, perhaps because of differences in mating calls. Uh, someone type this in. What it, when, if you have a difference in mating call, what kind of isolation is that? And this one I definitely did cover during the lecture. There it is, behavioral isolation. Good. Awesome. So, um, so Anjali, to answer your question, um, if you're deciding whether this is one species or two, I, on my reading here, I would probably um, say, yeah, good. All you guys are saying behavioral. Um, that these are these frogs, I would consider two separate species, uh, mainly based on you know the, the behavioral part and the uh, fertility part. But you could also argue a little bit in there on the um, geographic. Um, so yeah, Curtis, to answer your question, they, they, they don't have a fixed answer. And I think they did that on purpose because um, in nature, it's, it's really not that clear, right? Like we're, nature is not operating by how humans define things. What we're doing is looking at what's happening in nature and then trying to create uh, compartments and, and, uh, and key terms and definitions for that. So um, the reality is, yeah, when you're looking at species, it's a little bit blurry sometimes. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, Zoe, you're talking about the cichlids, so let me scroll down to that one. So this is example seven for those of you guys that are looking along. Uh, feel free to pull this up on your laptop if you have, are having trouble with seeing this. Uh, I can actually zoom in here. Let's see if that's helpful. Is that better? Okay. So uh, two very similar types of fish live in Lake Victoria in Africa. One type is blue, the other is red. Females of these two types prefer mates of the same color, and in nature, these two types of fish do not breed. However, when put in lighting conditions where they cannot see the color of other fish, they will freely mate with the fish of other colors. The females will now mate with either color male and produce fully fertile offspring. So yeah, this one's kind of an interesting one, right? Because um, obviously they do have like a preference. That's almost kind of a behavioral kind of thing, right? Um, and, and Kenny, I see you saying that it's like they're the same species because they're fertile. But here's the thing. Um, yeah. The, in nature, um, the chances that they have lighting conditions where they can't see the color of the other fish uh, is not super likely. Like the, the way I read this is, you know, what the scientists did is they took the fish, the blue one and the red ones, and they put it in a lab and then they changed the lighting conditions. And then, and only then, did the fish not mate, 
right? So um, one way that you could kind of decide like which way you want to go with this on one or two is like in nature, under natural conditions, what is uh, the most likely outcome, right? And so if in nature, um, they, uh, they are able to see colors, because I, I don't think, I mean, as long as the sun is out, they're, to a certain extent, they should be able to tell the difference between blue and red, unless they're colorblind. Um, so in nature, since they can probably tell the difference, they would not breed. And so I would say from that standpoint, they're probably two different species. Um, yeah, Curtis, you don't need to worry about changing your answers. <laughs> uh, again, this is not, I, I'm not uh, grading you or like judging you based on whether you have the right answer or not. I, I care more about like your thought process and how you want to use logic and use these definitions to make that decision. Okay. And, and this is science. I mean, you just, you know, you, all you can do is make your observations and then kind of uh, figure it out. Um, <laughs> you guys are very fixated on right answers here. So yeah, so this happened on a quiz. Uh, would separate species be correct? I think that if this were on a quiz, which you do have one next week, uh, I would not make it that this uh, this blurry. Okay, I, I think I'll be more obvious with like this is obviously the right answer or wrong answer. Um, I could see if, if if we did want to make it blurry, like we, I would I would ask like what you know if if I would say like the question would say if somebody wanted to argue that they were not the same species. Um, what would be like the most logical explanation? And then you would have to kind of tell me, you know, the fact that this doesn't happen in nature. Does that make sense? So uh, I'm not gonna try to trick you into like making a wrong answer. Um, yeah, so quizzes, um, <laughs> like I'm, I, um, you know, we don't know when we're gonna be back. So yeah, I'm gonna be posting some quizzes on Canvas, um, you know, to be honest, I mean, we talked about this before I left. I can't, I don't want to make like the quizzes and the tests like too high stakes because if I make it too worth too many points, then you guys are going to get fixated on like getting all the questions right and getting the grade and getting the points. So the quizzes are really more about uh, just, it's, it's, just, it's a check-in for you guys and it's a check-in for me, okay? So I, I'll see which ones you got right or wrong, but it's not necessarily going to reflect that in your grade. Does that make sense? Um, and I know for some of you guys you're like, but then why are we taking the quiz? So, you know, again, the, the heart behind it is like, I want to see what you guys are understanding. And it's also a chance for you to get feedback. So all that to say, um, the Corey, the next quiz is going to be on Monday. Um, and, um, it'll be, yeah, it'll be on canvas and, you know, see it if, if you, if you want, you know, just see it as a challenge, try taking it, um, without using your notes or whatever and uh and if you really need to use your notes i don't really care um it's just a chance to kind of practice and, and you know see what you know okay um points wise i honestly I, I may not even put it in okay i might i might just make sure that you've done it um obviously don't i don't like this, this is where it's tricky because i you know i just explained my whole reasoning for it but um you know I, i'll probably just check it for complete for completion but at the same time you don't want to just like go through really click and, and click a on everything you know like put a little effort into it see if you actually know the stuff you know let's make this about the learning and not uh not just about the points okay um let's see were there any questions i missed uh anjali is asking is it multiple choice i have to see um i actually haven't made the quiz yet i'll probably do that over the weekend so um be ready for anything you know and again if you <laughs> if you pull it up and you're like, oh my God, I don't know the answer. Like just go through your notes. It's totally fine. I mean, even not knowing the answer and like looking it up, that'll help you learn the right answer, right? So I'd rather you do that than just like take a guess and then never know the answer to that question. Uh, Zoe, you're asking uh, assignment number stuff. Oh yeah, sorry about that guys. I totally got it mixed up. Like I was trying to remember, it was such a crazy weekend. I was trying to remember last week what I made the uh, genetics uh, of evolution lecture and the, so the genetics of evolution was seven and i had forgotten that we made the frog evolution activity uh, assignment eight so um so to answer your question the uh frog genetics worksheet is assignment eight and that's 15 points and then the notes that you took from the screencast that's gonna be assignment nine and that's gonna be worth 10 points uh then that makes one species two species the, the thing that you did yesterday that's going to be or this this activity right here that's going to be assignment 10 and let's just make that uh, let's make that 10 points uh, whatever i really, I really care
care at this point. <laughs> um, and then tomorrow, uh, we are going to have another assignment, which I need to walk you guys through because six periods can be coming in in 20 minutes. So I'm going to show you guys that really quick and then I can answer any questions and then we're going to end this. Um, Corey, lecture every Thursday. Yeah, so I wouldn't really say this is a lecture. This is just kind of a chance to check in. And, you know, if you guys are enjoying this and you like this, you know, I may... If I, if I happen to like just be free and, and I'm kind of bored, like I'll, I'll jump on, you guys will get a notification and we can kind of just hang out and catch up and I can answer your questions. But officially, I'm gonna be doing this for your period every Thursday at 12.30, okay? At least for the next two weeks. Um, and then when the baby comes during or after spring break, then uh, it's gonna change a little bit. And I, we still, I'm, I don't know what's gonna happen with the sub or all that. I can tell you, I am not gonna be able to do all this, you know, with a newborn. So um, I will, I don't know. I have to. I have to talk to the district office and stuff. Can you make it? Uh, okay. So sorry. I. Okay. Are subspecies the same species? Yeah. Technically, they are. Um, but. Uh, they could, I don't know, maybe they're, you could think of it as like they're on their way to their own species, maybe. I don't know, if they stop reproducing with each other, right? Um, so if you think about like breed, dog breeds, like they, they technically can, dogs mix all the time, even if they're different breeds. Uh, yeah, Curtis, you're gonna staple that worksheet in. Um, Zoe, can I make the frog worksheet assignment 10? Yeah, you know what, Zoe, don't worry about having the assignments exactly like in order, okay? Like if you already made it 10 and you need to move things around, that's totally fine. Um, as long as everything is in there and you're organized and you can find all your assignments listed. Um, Thursday, Kenny, we uh, just finished up the frog activity. So uh, you can ask someone to send you a picture of that last sheet. Genetics, uh, Derek, I think that one was worth 10 points. Yes, Naya, go ahead and staple the frog evolution packet in your notebook. Just fold it in half and staple it. Okay. All right. Um, we have a few minutes left, so I'm just quickly going to show you the activity for um, tomorrow. Um, and if anybody's, you know, there's there's 27 of you guys watching, so there's like eight people that aren't on here. Um, if you are in touch with them, and they're like, what do we do? How do I do this? Just tell them to watch this live stream. Just skip to the end, uh, the last like five minutes, 10 minutes, uh, and I'll go over it. So um, where I ended up the lecture on the other day was um, uh, on the on how speciation can create new, or new species and that, that creates branches, right? And we can represent those branches using uh, trees. And so let me find, I thought I had searched. Okay, I'm just gonna look up phylo. You can look this up too on your own if you want. But if you look at phylogenetic trees and click images, there's a lot of different ways to make trees, but they all show the same thing. Um, oh, Serena, that's 10 points. If you're wondering, by the way, like how much everything is worth or what the order is, I've updated everything on the on our Canvas site. So let me drag that over and show you guys. So if you haven't already looked at this, please do look at it. Um, this. If you go to our Canvas site and you click on home page up here, um, it will take you to, the, to this whole um, schedule for the next couple of weeks, okay? All the way to spring break. Uh, and so all the, as I as we get closer to them, a lot of them already have like the assignment numbers and the point values on it. So um, you can just, you can just check uh, that there. Yeah, I, <laughs> there are a lot of unread messages. That's because they forward to my regular email and I usually respond to that, so. I should get all your messages in your email if you can't. Okay, um, phylogenetic trees. So there's a lot of different ways to do phylogenetic trees. This is the picture I actually used uh, in my PowerPoint uh, the other day. And again, the, the logic with this is it's like a family tree, right? Anytime you have a, a branch point right here or right here or right here, that shows a point of divergence when one species splits into two. So a tree um, can come up in all kinds of shapes and sizes. Uh, I really like this picture I saw one earlier. But you can see as I scroll through this, some are circular, some are more like triangular, some are uh, literally a tree, and others are more like, you know, boxy. Um, 
they can be arranged a lot uh, in very many different ways, but they all show the same thing, which is uh, ancestry and closeness of relatedness. So what you guys are gonna do tomorrow, and it's actually already on there, so if you have time today and you wanna work ahead, feel free to do that. I've uploaded the um, the next assignment, which is gonna be assignment, don't mess this up, Wayne, let's double check, double check the assignment here. I believe it's gonna be assignment 11, yeah, right here. So um, assignment 11 is carnivora trees. There's a little bit of instructions right there, but I'll just walk you through this, this really quick. Um, what I have for you is just some quick definition of a phylogenetic tree. And what you're gonna do is, I, I've, um, these, this is actually real, I didn't make any of this up, but these are, um, this is a table showing uh, a bunch of different animals that belong to class mammalia. These are all the mammals. Order carnivora, which are the carnivores. And then there's like suborders, superfamilies, family, genus, and species. And if you're not familiar with this, basically the further you get to the right over here, um, the more specific you're getting, right? So all these species belong to class mammalia. All of them belong to class carnivora. But you can see that there's a split at the suborder level. When you get to the suborder level, they split into filiformia and caniformia. Uh, and uh, can, does anybody like see, if I zoom in a little bit, can you guys see what words, what kind of animal does feli, filiformia remind you of and what does caniformia remind you of? Okay, good, yeah. So filiformia is where we get the word feline from and caniformia is, there you go, Katie, good, canine, right? So you kind of have the felines and the canines, which if you're familiar with animals, uh, we kind of refer to those as like the um, cat group and the dog group, right? So they do share a common ancestor. They had to at some point, but then as you work through this, you're gonna see that they start to branch off into some uh, different super families, families, genuses, and eventually species. So what you're gonna do for the activity, the first thing you're gonna do is just do a little research, right? Here are the scientific names for uh, this, for all the animals that we're working with. Uh, the first word that's capitalized is always gonna be their genus. That's gonna be this column right here. And then their second word is gonna be the, their species name. Um, and this is a system called binomial nomenclature. Scientists have been using this for a long time to name species. Um, so the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna look this up, look up Panthera tigris. That one's pretty easy. The name tells you it's, it's a tiger. And you're gonna write uh, the, the actual name. Now there are different types of tigers, so maybe look it up and, and write it there. So. Uh, look up the 12 animals just so you can like make a personal connection with each of these. And then what you're going to do is using a full spread in your notebook. So you can take your notebook, you know, open it up and use two full pages. You're going to create a phylogenetic tree. Um, and the way you're going to do this is uh, I would highly recommend that you set it up this way. Uh, there's an example up here. This is kind of a, a mini version of what you're going to make. Um, since they are all members of carnivora, that could be the place that you start. Okay, so my, my recommendation is like on the bottom of the page or on the left side of the page, make like pick a couple lines and reserve a, a set of a row of lines going across horizontally for each uh, level. So like do one for order, one for suborder, one for superfamily, all the way to species and make sure the species is at the, at the top. Okay, and, uh, and then what you're gonna do is uh, build your, your tree uh, according to that information, okay? Um, so that's uh, basically your activity for tomorrow. Um, it's uh, pretty straightforward. Um, and if you, again, if you run into like trouble, like setting it up, you're just gonna you know, look at this picture or you could just Google. Uh, and you can really make up, make any kind of tree you want. This is just one suggestion of how you can organize it. Now, uh, at the end, you are gonna have the species. And if you go to the second page, I actually like got pictures of all of them for you. And I made multiples because I usually print these out and, and cut, I would cut it and give each of you a little slip. But um, if you want, you can go ahead and print it out your, on your own and you can cut, you know, you really only need one set here, uh, but cut it out and then you're gonna glue these like pictures along the top of your page uh, so that you can see your animals. Now, if you don't have a printer, you can, um, uh, you can draw the animals yourself. I know some of you guys are real good artists. So um, that's, uh, that's the activity for tomorrow. And that, that's gonna, again, be assignment 11. We'll make it 10 points. Um, and then that's it. Uh, Corey, I think I saw you ask, is there homework over the weekend? No, we're gonna do it like normal school. I'm not gonna give you homework, but just know on Monday, there's gonna be like a little quiz. So maybe look over your notes, especially if, you, if, you, if, you, if you're accepting my challenge of not using your notes, maybe like spend 15, 20 minutes, like looking through all the assignments and just reviewing everything and then just test yourself using the, the quiz, okay? Just think of it as more like a self quiz rather than a big high stakes test. Are there any questions on this assignment?
Okay, is everyone still there? <laughs> I see there's 26 people here, but the, the, the comment section got a little quiet, so I don't know if you guys are still there. Ooh, clicked on the link, but the worksheet did not work. Let's see what's going on with that. I'm gonna try it here. Okay, it is working for me. So here's the thing, it's a PDF. So it's not a, it's not a Word document. So maybe you try, what you can try doing is uh, if you see Katie, um, if you maybe try just right click and then go to save link as, it'll, nope, that's not gonna work either, huh? It's, it's working for me. Uh, you don't need to print the worksheet, Kalia. You can, you know, you can just look on on, on the computer. Um, the only thing you, that you may want to print out are the pictures, but um, you can just write in the animal names on your worksheet and then, you know, let it go from there. Oh, it says it's unauthorized. Oh, that's shady. Uh, let me see if I need, I need to go to my files and make it public or something. Huh. That's strange. has never happened before. Let me see here. Let's try, let me see if I just try relinking it. So I'm gonna delete that and I'll just put carnivore trees. All right, I'm gonna save it and okay, go ahead and try it now. Kenny, you're such a troll, man. Better just to not say anything. I agree with Tristan. Just be quiet. Is it working now? Okay, Curtis is saying it's working. Let me get confirmation from other people. Katie, you good? Okay, awesome. I'm really glad you guys asked that because I would otherwise I'd get a million emails. Um, okay, I gotta shut this down um, and kind of reset things for the next period. Uh, we're gonna do the same thing, so there's no point of you guys watching this, but. Uh, thanks for tuning in. I hope it was fun to, to catch up. And um, like I said, if maybe earlier next week, if like on the Tuesday or something, we have some time, um, you know, uh, Anjali, try, yeah, try reloading your page, uh, like the actual browser, just re refresh the whole page. The, the link will update. Um, so maybe I'll do a live next week with like everybody, if you guys are interested. Uh, you guys may also notice you've been getting notifications from my AP class. Um, and uh, if you're really bored and you want to learn, we're actually going through anatomy and physiology right now, which is all human body stuff. And that's not something that we cover in this class. So if you're really bored and you want to um, learn a little bit more about, um, we're going to be going into, into the brain and into hormones. Uh, we learn a bit about the immune system too. Uh, feel free to tune in on that and, um, and enjoy those um, screencasts, all right? Uh, if you have any feedback about this live stream or any of the videos that I make, like just leave comments for me. I do check those. It's, it's really fun and, and hilarious to <laughs> read your comments. Um, I'm just going to ask everyone to be kind to one another. Uh, we don't really need extra drama these days. Okay, so I'm going to shut this down. You guys have a great day and uh, a great weekend. And if you need anything, uh, you can leave a comment or just email me directly. And I will see you guys very soon. All right, have a good one. Bye. Actually, I'll give it a chance for people to leave last minute comments.